All right, when creating business letters, uh, there's a lot of different things that you need uh, to know how to do and what I'm going to be looking for. Um, right now, the show hide characters are on my screen. That's all the symbols that you're seeing. Okay, to turn your show hide symbols on, you can do the this button up here and you can click on or off to take them on or off. If I was to hit print right now, these show hide uh, features would not print out they're just kind of an on-screen guide to help you count these blank lines right here because these line, blank lines are going to be important whenever it uh, comes time to um, grade your test. Uh, when creating a business letter from scratch, let's just start from the beginning. This is an example of what your business letter is going to look like. This was typed by one of our students. But starting from scratch, you're going to go to File New or just open up Microsoft Word and we'll click blank document. There's four things that you need to do before you even start typing. One of the main and most important things that you have to do first is click no spacing. Okay, the second thing is you can come over here and change 11 to 12 and then come over here to your font and change it to Times New Roman. You may have to go all the way down to the T's, but if you've used Times New Roman, then it should be up here at the top. So that's the, the three things that you need to do. The fourth thing that you need to do is set your top margin. Right now you have a one inch top margin over here, but we need two inches top margins for a business letter. This will allow for the letterhead stationery that companies have pre-printed up here at the top of their page that has their company name and logo on top of here. So we need to make sure we, we leave enough room for those logos if there was one on here. So to set your top margin, you're going to go to Page Layout, click Margins. Now, for the first time, you're going to have to go down to Custom Margins but after you've set your custom margins one time then it will save your last custom setting which means your top is at two and everything else stays the same at one but for the very first time you'll have to go to click or click the custom margins button now over here you're gonna do the top to two inches and watch the preview while I'm clicking the two inches it's kinda dropping that white space down when I click OK, watch my ruler over here. Okay, now it went ahead and gave me two inches top margin of gray shaded area where I'm not allowed to type in up here at the top. So this gives me plenty of room up here if I owned my own company and I had my name up here and, and my logo and, and some neat stuff up here that would make my letter look, look good. All right, so once you have those four things set, go ahead and click back on the Home tab. And then we can start typing our business letter. Um, the reason why we have to do this first, let's say you did it third. And you changed everything over here, and then you came over here and started switching these two things back and forth. When you start switching these two things back and forth, then it takes off everything that you did from here all the way over here and it kind of takes it away so that means you have to reset everything so a lot of you like to type something and then you like to highlight it all the way down and then think that you can make your changes up here when it's all highlighted Well, that's not the case when you're switching back and forth here uh, so let's just switch it just what we have right now so if I switch it over here, look what happened. It automatically changed back. And if I come back to no spacing again, it still stays like that. So that means I gotta go back and change it again. So 12 and times New Roman. So that's why I said it's very important you always click no spacing before you start typing. Let's go back to the other business letter that was pulled up a minute ago. So let's say you left it on normal the whole time and then you highlighted everything just like I was talking about a second ago and you start switching back and forth. Look at the difference. This is what it would look like if you kept it on normal and then let's say you highlighted it all and you wanted to put it on no spacing. 
Well, see, everything looks back the way it was, but a couple of things changed. It went back to 11, and it went back to this font. So I got to change it back to Times New Roman. All right, so that's why it's important. It kind of saves you a lot of time if you just do no spacing. That's why I'm kind of hitting that hard right now. All right, working down our business letter. We got no spacing, we got 12, we got Times New Roman, we got a two inch top margin, and we started typing right there. Always after the date, you're gonna hit enter four times. When you hit enter four times, that leaves you with three blank lines, not four. See, one, two, three, four, and then you started typing. So three blank lines in that section. This would be your address. This would be the address of the person you're sending the letter to. Notice that to it's addressed to Julie and Julie. This right here is the salutation, so you need to leave a blank line before and after the salutation to separate them. This is the body of the letter. You need to leave a blank line between each paragraph to separate them and then separate that line there at the end. You have your closing, which we always close with the word sincerely. And then we have three blank lines and then our typed name. The reason why we leave three blank lines down here is because you're going to write, you're going to sign your name in cursive in blue or black ink in this section right here when you print it out. We type our name on there because sometimes we just can't read your handwriting. And then last, if you have the word enclosure at the bottom, that means something else is inside the envelope. So if you go up here and you read, it probably says something in this paragraph about something else is inside the envelope besides the letter. Sometimes this word's on there and sometimes it may look like this. And you may just end it like that. So sometimes enclosure's on and sometimes it's not. So for test purposes, this is what I'm grading. I'm grading your two inch top margin. I'm grading that you put it on no spacing, 12 and times New Roman. I'm grading this quadruple section right here. I'm grading this section, this section, this section, this one, this one, this quadruple section, and then this section down here if, if the word enclosure is down there at the bottom or not. If your letter looks like this, then this section's wrong. It has to have three symbols. Um, if this looks like this, then that's wrong. You got one too many enters right there. So it has to look exactly like this one. A lot of you are used to maybe tabbing in paragraphs. You don't tab in paragraphs on a block style business letter. Everything lines up to the left hand side. Some of you are used to putting maybe commas after sincerely and maybe a colon here. Well, in these business letters, we don't use them. That is either open or closed punctuation. I'm not an English teacher, but I know right now, um, I think it's closed punctuation that they're, that we don't put the symbols on. And I think on open punctuation, that's, that's when you put them on. Or it could be the opposite. I, I really can't remember. Uh, that's kind of sad, but um, anyway. So this is what your business letter is going to look like. Um, you'll get your practice. Eventually, when it comes test time, and I pass out your handout, it may look something like this. It may be all bunched together, and then you will have to um, make it look like a business letter. So. It kind of starts off easy, and then it gets a little bit harder. Sometimes on your test, it even may look like this. It may be um, have a symbol right there to kind of separate that section. I'll hit backspace here. Maybe a symbol to separate that, just to kind of save room. There'll be a symbol to separate that section. And then you'll get something like that passed out to you and be like, okay, we'll type this up and make it look like a business letter. So then you would have to 
type it all up and then kind of enter that down come over here get rid of that symbol and then enter that down and then come to this section and always after the date you have your three blank lines and then you have your address that was kind of squeezed together so we'll enter that down and then we gotta separate the citation and then we gotta separate our paragraphs with a blank line and then our closing needs to be separated by a blank line and then after sincerely is your other big gap of three blank lines that gives us enough room to sign our name right there uh, some students will get that mixed up and they will do their three blank lines here and then when they hit print they'll try to squeeze their name and try to sign it right there well that doesn't give you enough room so that's why the big gap needs to go right there the quadruple space and then get rid of this so this is what your test should look like if I take the symbols off and then that's a good business letter right there let me fix this because notice when those symbols are on it also leaves little dots right here that just tells you how many times you hit the space bar when you're down here and you're ending a sentence you really need two dots right there to separate your sentences commas is just one dot because that's not the end of a sentence uh, this was the end of, of a sentence so I'm gonna hit the space there for her and then moving on this one hit the space bar twice and then start typing and just continue on and, and try to space that out the way it needs to be spaced out if you see like a dot like right there then there shouldn't be a dot right there you should start at the left all the way over to the left so no dots over there and that's business letter so hopefully now you know how to type a correct uh, business letter in the correct format good luck and I hope you do a good job